Hi and welcome to the Autofill 2 Quick Start Guide. This video is designed to get you up and running as quick as possible. We have a separate video on installation, a separate video on what's new in Autofill 2, and other videos that dive deeply into specific features. So we've got our layer, let's apply Autofill. We have a single point here, and if we hit play, we'll see that that grows there. Now, how can we define the shape of the fill? Two ways, we can come down to the speed map as well as the fill settings. If we turn off the speed map, we'll see a completely different shape. And if we wanted to make that a hard edge, what we could do is say, lower the blur radius, but increase the exposure. I'm gonna undo that. And instead I'm gonna go shape-based flow. So this is the new default method for speed map in autofill. If we click view speed map, we can see what's going on here. To get a better idea of what this is actually doing, let's come down to about and support and open that. That'll bring us to the autofill 2 wiki. Come down to speed map. We can see the new speed map modes shape-based flow, and we can see what that's doing to different shapes. It molds to the shape of your layer, which is really handy. Another thing we can do is add a second point but this point here, I'm gonna to move to the end and I can actually define a delay for that. So for example, I want a one second delay on this point and the first point is just gonna fill immediately. If we hit play, we can see that there. Now let's go in and add a gradient to this. Let's go to style builder. At the top, we have a preset viewer. So if you wanna know what's possible with this very powerful set of compositing tools, click the open button and that will bring you to our preset gallery. Here we have just pre-rendered videos of all the different presets. They're divided into categories, so we have different reveals, more reveals, waves, which can be composited on top to just add some visual interest rather than simply transitioning. We have transition outs and some more reveals. So have a look at these, find the ones you want and come to the apply preset. And in one click, you can have some very complex things happening. For demonstration purposes, I'm not gonna use a preset. I'm just gonna use a single layer and instead of original, which will fill the original layer, I'm gonna set that to gradient. We have a very intuitive gradient widget here and I'm gonna quickly come in and add a rainbow gradient. So drag that along, click to add a point, double click to change the color and voila. Okay, now I've got a rainbow gradient happening here and we have different gradient modes. So if I set it to age, for example, we'll see that the color actually doesn't change over time. The color that it has is based off the age of the gradient. The spectrum of color here that we have is actually based on the duration which we define. If I want the entire spectrum to evolve over five seconds, we can set that here. Or for example, I could set that to one and have it repeat five times, one per second. So if I go to trail, we can see that it's repeating a lot. Whereas if each of these repeats took five seconds, it would be a much more gradual change. So I've set it to a value I like, but uh, we can improve the tip here by coming to speed map and changing it back to shape based flow. Then instead of an influence of 100%, I'm gonna set that to 150%. We're getting some interesting variance in the gradient at the edges. So if we view the speed map, we can see that at the edges, the shape is different. Something you'll have to be careful of is if the speed map influence increases a lot, you can get some jaggy edges. We can come up here and apply screen space anti-aliasing to help those a little bit. Another thing we can do is instead of having this hard edge here is come into the gradient and utilize the RGBA nature. So let's add another point and it'll be red as well. And that opacity we can set to zero. Now, these both being red, the blending doesn't look as good because this should be say orange. And then let's turn off the preview input to get a look at what that's doing. We can easily play with the speed of the simulation by changing the speed parameter here. And this is based on steps per second, not per frame. So if we change the frame rate, the timing will be exactly the same. In this example, we'll take a look at the borders and bridges. So we have a single point of growth here. And if I just apply that to the D, we can see that because it's detached from the other characters, no growth occurs. It stops at the border. Instead of having to add a point per individual character, borders and bridges allow us to very easily group these together by building an invisible bridge. So what I will do is come up to the mask, add a point where we start and bridge it to the end. By default, nothing happens because our borders and bridges are set to none. But if we change that to mask and it by default, it will accept all paths. It will draw an invisible bridge between the letters, which will allow it to fill all the different characters. You can define the thickness of the bridge itself here, and it will travel along here at the speed at which you defined based on the speed to fill the entire layer. Another thing that's really cool is because that paths move with the layer, if we wanted to animate this layer, we can do that 
and the fill will animate with it. Now, one thing to note is that we're using a point for growth and because the layer is a vector continuously rasterized, the point doesn't actually move with the layer. However, that doesn't matter because since we have fill already and fill grows more fill, that's not an issue in this case. However, that would be an issue in, in other situations. In this video, we showed a brief overview of all the features. Check out the in-depth guides for more information on specific features, as well as the wiki for in-depth information on everything. And I hope you enjoy using Autofill 2.